Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your excellent greatness. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you for Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our soon coming King, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, our Leader, our Guide, our Divine Enabler. We thank you that he is the one, Father, who has downloaded and trusted in our hearts your divine love, a divine impartation of your nature. And we thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is transforming us into the very image of Christ, even as we keep looking in the mirror of your word, the perfect law of liberty. There is greater emancipation, greater freedom taking place, a greater un unraveling of the old life, and we are becoming more like Jesus. Father, we thank you for, for, for freedom this morning. We thank you for emancipation this morning. We thank you, Father God, for absolute release from every entanglement, everything, Lord, that hinders our forward momentum, our mobility, our progress in the spiritual realm, Lord, in the things pertaining to uh, the kingdom of God and the things pertaining to spiritual growth and the things pertaining to spiritual progress and in the things, Father God, pertaining to progress in the natural and things pertaining to progress in our soul life and our mental makeup. Father, we thank you right now for every barrier being destroyed. We thank you, Lord God, by the help of the Holy Ghost that we will in fact make progress. All that you have ordained, Father God, for our lives for 2022, we declare, we make a declaration, we, we, we get in agreement with your word, your will, Father, all that you've declared for our lives, we will walk it out. We will see the full manifestation of all that you promised. And every encumbrance to that reality, Father, we thank you for the wisdom of God. We thank you, Lord God, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we will be able to discern the movements of the enemy. Anything, Lord, that is spiritual in nature, natural in nature, any mental barrier, Father, that prevents our progress, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus that by the Holy Ghost with laser precision, Father, those things will be identified. You will uncover them. You will uncloak them, Father. And by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we will break through every barrier into the freedom, into the liberty, into the purpose, into the will of God for our lives and families, our lives individually, our lives collectively as a as a local church body, and all that you have ordained for CFCC, Father, in 2022, as a collective and corporate body of believers, we will arrive at that reality. We will, Father God, proceed. We will progress. We will see, Lord, all that you have planned and purposed, unhindered by anything spiritual, natural, and even things in the mental realm that prevents us from seeing the glory of God manifest. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I wanna, wanna share with you, I don't know if I'm gonna get to, to finish all of this because of the time uh, and because of the lengthiness of this, this can go in a whole lot of different directions, but I wanna just be laser focused and hit uh, the areas in which the Lord has ministered to my heart. And I just believe that as we do this, God's gonna pinpoint some things, uncover some things, identify some things and help us move into what he has planned for us for this year, uh, unhindered uh, by anything that could prevent our progress. I wanna to talk to you from this subject, breaking through the barriers that impede progress. And as a subtitle, it's time to advance. I don't know about you, but I am ready to move forward in many areas of my life. I am ready to move forward corporately. I'm, I'm ready to move forward into the things that I envision in my heart that God has revealed through his word that I know is his perfect will for my life individual and for your lives. I'm sure there are things in your life that you, you know that God has spoken to you, but it seems like there is something hindering your advance. And, and I believe God wants to pinpoint those things so that you and I can move into those areas. And whatever it is that is hindering and blocking uh, our progress, those things will be dealt with by the Spirit in Jesus' name. 
Bless the Lord. I want to go over to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22, and I want to just read a little bit of it. And then I want to get down into verses 29 and 34, which is our anchor scriptures uh, for what we're going to take our thoughts from this morning. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22. You, you'll find this, in, uh, this entire discourse in 2 Samuel chapter 22 in Psalm chapter 19. Uh, I believe it's a, a poetic, dramatic expression of God's deliverance of David's life. And the way David describes how it is that God delivers him is somewhat dramatic, but I can understand the things that David went through, the opposition that David experienced in his life, the things that David experienced where it, it pertains to the kingship of Saul, and ultimately the fact that David had already been anointed by Samuel twice already, and that uh, God had ordained for David to become the king. But now here it is that David is on the run. Saul is jealous of him. And Saul actually wants to kill David. David has Saul as an enemy. Uh, he's had many other enemies along the way. But this particular time, it is now the culmination of all of what David saw as enemies that God delivered him from. And so he has this poetic, dramatic expression of God's deliverance. It's, it's not like uh, God delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt where God uh, manifested himself as a, 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 a cloud by, 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 by night and a pillar of uh, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. It's not like Moses who uh, used this rod and stressed it over the, the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted and they went across on dry land. You know, that vivid picture of seeing uh, the dramatic, the spectacular way that God brought deliverance to Egypt, uh, to, to, to his Israel from Egypt. But now David, he expresses those same kinds of metaphoric uh, uh, thinking and speaking and how he saw God deliver him. And I would think that by all the hardship that David went through, all of the different things and Saul trying to kill him and him being on the run and, and all of the different enemies that he had to deal with, to him and David's mind, he saw a picture of how it is God would, had, had brought him deliverance. But here in, in, in um, 2 Samuel chapter 22, let me get my glasses. I want you to just catch some of how David expresses this and then verse, I'll read some of it and then I'll drop down to verse 29. Here in verse one, it says, and David spake unto the Lord, the words in this song, in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. And I believe God that we would believe God today that God would deliver us from all of our enemies. There would come a day that we would totally be delivered. And so, it says, out of the hand of Saul. So Saul was a primary enemy in David's life. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. And then he says in verse number four, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies. When the waves of death compass me, that's how David saw all of these different things that were happening to him. He says, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. That deep place of depression from all uh, that David was experiencing felt like the sorrows of hell that compassed him about. And I'm sure there are certain times in our life when we go through seasons emotionally where, where metaphorically it feels like the weight of these same kinds of things we find ourselves in the midst of. He says, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God and he did hear my voice out of his temple and my cry did enter his ears. Verse number eight. Then the earth, look at, look at the... Uh, uh, a poet, poetic, uh, dramatic expression of how David sees how God is bringing deliverance in his life. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wrong. So God had gotten angry by all of these different things that David was going through. And now he's about to bring David, David's deliverance. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. 
devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also. It's almost like David said, God is God is, is manifesting his power and glory in such a spectacular way to bring forth this deliverance in my life. He saw all of these different things, whether it be emotionally or whether it be metaphorically. And maybe, maybe David just saw this in his mind's eye, how God was bringing deliverance to him. He says, he came down and darkness was under his feet and he rode upon the turf and did fly and he, would, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind and he made darkness uh, and he made darkness pavilions around about him, dark waters and thick clouds of, of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven and the most high uttered his voice and he sent arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomforted them. David is saying, this is how God is delivering him from his enemies. And verse number 16, he says, and the channels of the sea appeared and the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his, of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me and drew me out of many waters. Verse 18, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Now let's drop down to verse 29 to 34. This is where I wanna anchor our thoughts in breaking through barriers that impede progress. David saw all of those different things as barriers to what God had promised him. He is already inaugurated, he's already anointed king, but yet still he's dealing with this opposition from, from Saul. He is on the run, but now David begins to see that there's going to be a time where God is going to bring deliverance, but there are some barriers that he's gonna need to run through. He's gonna need to break through. And here in verse 34, he says, he maketh my feet like hinds feet. And he set of me upon my high places. He teaches my hands the war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. That thou also, that thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy gentleness have made me great. Here it is, verse 37. Thou hast enlarged my footsteps under me so that my feet did not slip. So in other words, we won't make progress and stumble backward on our way to the fulfillment of what God has ordained for our life. Sometimes in our life, it seems like we make 20 steps forward and 10 steps backward, or we'll make 10 steps forward and 20 steps backward. God wants to bring you and I into a season where we go forward. And everything that is a barrier to forward progress, God wants to identify those things for you and I. And with his help, he wants to help you and I to break through those barriers. And I'm de 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 declaring to you and I that this year, 2022, is going to be the year that we break through barriers and make progress in every area of our life. Verse 38, he says, and I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them, and turned not again until I had consumed them. Verse 39, and I have consumed them, and wounded them, and they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength to the battle. Thou, that thou rose up against me, uh, them that rose up against me, hast thou subdued under me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemy, that I might destroy them that hate me. Did I miss something here? I'm in verse, where am I at? I have missed something here. Oh, yes, I did. All right, let me jump back up. Let me jump back up to verse 29, verse 29. It says, for thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. Verse 30, for by thee I have run through a troop 
and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. Verse 30 again, for by thee, I have run through a troop and my God, and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. That's the point I want to make right there. By thee, I have run through a troop, forces, forces. A troop rep represents forces and by, by, uh, and by my God, I have leaped over a wall. That's a barrier. And so there, there are forces sometimes that are preventing us, unseen forces that are preventing us from moving forward. But then he says, by my God, I shall leap over a wall. So there are also barriers. There are forces and barriers, many times, both of which are unseen. And so here in Isaiah chapter 45, verse two, I wanna use that also to plug into this thought. It says, I will go before you, before thee, speaking of God, and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Let me read it again. Isaiah 45, verse 2. I will go before thee, speaking of God. I will make the crooked places straight and I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. So God says, I'm going to break through the barriers of progress, the things that are preventing you from entering into what I have ordained for your life. Many times the gates of brass and bars of iron are metaphors for things that are not only physical in nature, but are spiritual in nature. It's one thing to have a physical barrier in front of you. Most often we know what to do with physical barriers. Let me give you an opportunity uh, to, to draw a, a, a picture of that. You know, this morning we're, 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 we're on our way to the house of God, many of, of which on this line, the, the first fruits of those who, who, who arrived at the building found that there was an atmosphere of frigid, cold temperature. So now we got a barrier. And uh, I'm driving down the road and I get the call and I find out that this is the, the case. What are we going to do? So when you have a natural barrier, there's always the opportunity to take a detour. So what do we do? We make a detour. We had head back home so that we can still make progress. Many times natural barriers are just there so that you can detour, but they are not there to stop your progress. But oftentimes, we don't look for a detour, and so we are stymied or we are hindered by the barrier. And in the spirit realm, God wants us to identify those barriers that are trying to impede our progress so that we can break through them and make progress. I wish you could say amen. amen. And so this word impede, it means to delay or prevent. And, and I don't know about you, but there's been some times where I, 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 I sense or I feel in my heart that there's something spiritual, something in the unseen realm trying to stop me or prevent me from making process, progress or trying to hinder that, 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 that eventuality. And so it means to delay or prevent uh, uh, something or someone from moving forward to obstruct or to hinder. And the word barrier is very similar because it's, a, it, it's similar in nature because it's a fence or other obstacles that prevents movement or access. So it prevents you from moving forward but it also prevents you from having access that you have a right to. I'm declaring to you that in this season, Whatever is hindering us from moving forward, whatever is hindering us from accessing what God has for us, is going to be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. But most often we are dealing with barriers to our spiritual, mental, and physical progress that often are unseen and, un and unidentifiable. You see, that, that's the thing that, that makes these barriers 
more potent in their, 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 the fact that they are there is because they are unseen and many times we can't, we can't identify what it is. But, but God wants you and I to, to identify the source of the barrier. For every barrier, there is a source. I wish you could put that in the chat. For every barrier, there is a source. And we're going to identify, you know, spiritually speaking, the source of many of these barriers. So it is the will of God for us to not only to identify their source, but also to conquer and destroy their impediment to our progress in all areas that pertain to our lives. This is the year that we are proclaiming our forward progress. Every barrier standing in our pathway by the help of God will be broken through in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Everything that is hidden. See, that, that's the nature of these barriers, these, 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 these uh, 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 bars, so to speak. You know, as I expressed what they were, you know, the, the, uh, gates of brass and the bars of iron and even uh, metaphorically this troop that David saw that he had to break through and the, the wall that he saw that he had to leap, leap over. Uh, these things are preventing forward progress. So this year we are believing God that these things will be clearly identified by the spirit of God. Amen. Whatever is hidden must be uncovered and dismantled. With every natural barrier, watch this now, there will be the discovery of a God-ordained detour. And, and so, so, so when it comes to natural barriers, it is the will of God for us to discover a God-ordained detour. And, and I believe that to be the case in the spirit realm as well. Whenever there are things trying to prevent our progress, I believe that there's a God-ordained detour for us so that we can make forward progress. The unseen spiritual barriers will be identified at the root, and the mental barriers to our forward progress will be destroyed in Jesus' name. They're both both detrimental to our progress, whether it's a spiritual battle uh, barrier or whether it's a mental barrier. All have a source and all must, by the help of God, be broken through. Now, invisible barriers are satanic limitations. I want to say that again. Invisible barriers that are that are destructive in nature, that are negative in nature, that, that, that prevent us from moving forward, they are called satanic limitations. In other words, they keep you in a certain place. They, they keep you in a certain position. You, you can only go but so far, and, 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 and you, you sense that th there's more, but you, you can't seem to get there. They're called satanic, satanic limitations, and they're placed on individuals from the spirit realm. Now, these invisible barriers are the primary reason why a lot of destinies are hindered, stagnated, and destroyed. Invisible barriers are caused by stubborn spirits. They, they are satanic spirits. They are sent with an assignment by Satan himself to prevent us from making progress in the spirit realm, in spiritual matters, and even in things pertaining to your personal life, your career, your relationships, your, your marriage, your financial status, all of these different things, Satan puts up barriers to keep you and I in a certain, a certain place. And so they're stubborn spirits, and it's a foundational strong man who resides sometimes in families, raging war on them and ensuring that no one succeeds in that family. And by the blood of Jesus, I'm declaring that if there's any residual things, you know, uh, uh, that are generational in nature, that, 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 that have come down through the bloodline, that, that would try to hinder us uh, our advancement, whether it be spiritually, whether it be in our, uh, our mental makeup, whether it be in our vocations, whether it be uh, in the assignment that God has given us in the name of Jesus, those things will be discovered and dismantled and we will break forward and break through into what God has for our lives. So we are to identify barriers 
to progress in three realms. And I wanna talk about uh, two very prominent realms. The other is very base. The natural realm is base because uh, using natural barriers, we can understand something about the nature of barriers. But when it comes to the spirit realm and the mental realm, we have to understand the will of God. We have to understand the word of God. And we have to fully identify the roots of these issues so that these barriers can be dis dismantled. So the first barrier I want to deal with, uh, God permitting the time this week for at least uh, the next 35 minutes, is the spiritual realm the spiritual realm. And, and this is the realm where you and I must gain knowledge and you and I must gain the ability to discern the source of a barrier that is satanically inspired or influenced to hinder our forward progress. And I wanna say this, not all spiritual battle uh, barriers are demonic in nature. There are some spiritual barriers that are put in place by God or designed by God. And, and, and you and I have to discern when it's God or when it's Satan putting up this roadblock, so to speak. Amen. So the difference between a barrier placed in our life by Satan is this, it is meant to derail or bring destruction or limitations in our life. So, so no question about it. Satan's barrier is a destructive barrier in nature. It will uh, be bent on or intent on derailing or bringing destruction or so, some form of a limita limitation so that you're not able to press forward in life you're still in the same place. When God places a barrier in your life, it can be for protection. A divine no. So when God places a barrier, it can be number one to protect you. There's something on the other side of that barrier that God's trying to keep you from. The second part of that barrier is a divine no. When God puts up a barrier, he's saying, no, this is not the time, no, this is not the direction, no, no, no. So, so we have to discern that this barrier is of God, it's a divine no, or a redirect, or it can be a redirect and can be, 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 be meant that no access is granted. God says, I'm gonna redirect you right now. No access is granted. We must prayerfully discern the source and the reason. And I'm gonna give you an example in a few minutes about the point I just made when it comes to God. A divine no, it could be God protecting you or it could be God saying, I wanna redirect you. That's good. I hope that's a blessing to someone, mm -hmm. all right? Let's, let's look at the source of spiritual bar uh, barriers that are satanic in nature. I want you to get this down. Number one, demonic altars. De demonic altars can be the source of a barrier uh, that, that is still lingering in our life. And most often it has to do with our generations. It has nothing. See, we can find that our deliverance in Christ is constantly taking place. The, the authority of God's word is constantly bringing freedom into our life. But although God has made promise, although God has established everything that needs to be established in Christ Jesus on our behalf, our lack of knowledge sometimes in a particular area keeps us limited to a certain area. Although God is bringing a level of freedom in one area of your life, you find that you're still encumbered. You still that you, you find that you're still uh, 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 held back somewhere. There, there's something preventing you from walking out the fullness of what God has for your life. There's something still preventing you. And it could be there's things that have happened in our bloodline that the Holy Spirit has yet to reveal to us. And so it requires prayer. When you find that you've been in a, a certain state for a long time and, and, and you, you feel like you've done all that you know to do, you've, you went the word where you pray, but yet still there's certain, there's something still preventing you. It requires 
discerning what the root or the source of that is. Number two, demonically inspired generational customs, traditions, and covenants. And this, again, can come through the bloodline. There, 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 there could be things still ensnaring us. And we have to pray, God, what is this? Why, why is it that I, it seems that I just can't make the kind of progress in this area, whether it's a relationship? Why is it, God, that, that, that and, and this, this is something that, 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 that single singles, even whether it be men or women, have to begin to really see God? Why is it, God, that I'm still not married yet? What is it? What, what is blocking that reality? Number three, curses that are still operational in your life through your bloodline. Now, all of that's important for us to understand that it takes a knowledge of the truth and the Holy Spirit to help us discover what is it. Often there are spiritual forces at, hard, at the heart of, of barriers to progress. They are destructive in nature. This is why we must know we have been redeemed from all destruction, all right? Let's, let's go this route right here. Let's go to Psalms 103, verse one to four. So when we find ourselves beginning to question ourselves and beginning to question God, ask the, why am I still going through this? Why is this still happening? Why does it seem like I just can't make the kind of progress that I need to make? It requires us not only seeking God's mind, but putting up a fight in the realm of the spirit for the freedom that God has ordained for our lives. In Psalm 103, verse one to four says, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who heal all thy diseases, and I love this last part. This is where I want to take this from. Who redeemed thy life from destruction. Well, the demonic altars, the demonic generational customs, traditions, and covenants, and curses that may still be operational in the bloodline comes under who have redeemed my life from destruction. We have to contend for that reality to break those influences who crowneth, here it is, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So we must make sure, here's another point, we must make sure that we are not breaking the hedge of God's protection around our lives by some unrepented sin. When we have unrepented sin in our life, the hedge is broken, but there is a barrier that blocks our progress because now Satan can have access to hinder our forward momentum. By what? Unrepented sin. Unrepented sin places a barrier to progress. Amen. Bless the Lord. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. It says this. Now, now as it pertains to curses, as a bird by wandering, and the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. So a curse cannot operate in our lives without a cause. A curse cannot operate in our lives without a divine permission. A curse cannot operate in our lives without something that has been done to allow that curse the liberty to operate. Why? Because we have a covenant with God, and in that covenant, Christ Jesus has redeemed us from all curses. So if a curse is still operating, it is because we have not appropriated the reality of the truth of God's word in our life and put up resistance against even something that may have been introduced into our bloodline. Well, let me give you, give, you, give you an example of that. In my bloodline and in my wife's bloodline, divorce, broken marriage, broken homes, uh, that was a byproduct of what was going on 
in both families through iniquity, through sin, that brokenness or that, that devastation or that devastation of coming in and tearing up the covenant union was on both sides of the family. That thing wanted to, wanted to become a generational thing. But my wife and I made up our minds that in our generations, in our relationship, divorce would not be an option. So we had to deal with that thing both naturally and spiritually by, by how we appropriated the word of God, how we operated with one another by covenant revelation, and, and by how we declared that by the blood of Jesus, that thing would be destroyed and it would stop with us. And so that curse of broken marriages stopped with us. So when we know that we are walking upright before the Lord and have no known unrepented sin, we must declare boldly our rights our redemptive rights over every barrier to our progress that causes us not to move forward in Christ and in our lives. So when we know that we have un no unknown sin, then we must declare our redemption. Why? Because Satan is a stubborn spirit. He seeks to destroy any progress that you and I could make in Christ, spiritually speaking, and when it comes to our lives, careers, relationships, whatever it is. And so in Psalm 107, verse 2, it says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. I, I can't make this point any stronger saints other than to say that you and I, in order to break through these barriers of limitations by the help of the Holy Spirit, we identify what they are. But then when things persist, we must continue to declare our redemption. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Well, well there is an enemy assigned to hinder forward progress. Everything about Satan's kingdom is established to stop forward momentum. Rather, it is a backwards kingdom. It would rather see us keep going backwards. Never having joy, never having peace, never experiencing the abundance of God, the, 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 the life and the liberty that God has given us, the freedom that God has given us, the testimonies that God has given us to express of his goodness and constantly going back. It's not going back in sin. It's just not having the joy of seeing victory manifest in your life. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, we know this Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So this deals with the curse, the curse itself. Curses in our generations can be an unseen barrier to spiritual progress, even though we're in Christ Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said the truth. You shall be my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When we know what Christ has redeemed us from, then these spiritual barriers must give way to the truth. Something's going to have to move. Something's going to have to shift. Amen. Because truth always wins out. Satan waits for us to be derelict in our expression, our bold expression of our rights. So the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, I'm decreeing, we will move forward this year. Cursed is everyone that hang on the tree. We hung there with him. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. You and I are walking in the blessing of Abraham and we have received the promise of the Spirit. We are blessed with faithful Abraham. We are blessed with faithful 
Abraham. So let's look at how Abraham was blessed, what that blessing was. And so this will help us contend with those unseen demonic influences that seeks to keep us outside of the full blessing that God has ordained for our lives. We're to be the head, not the tail. We're to be above, not beneath. Our baskets are to be blessed. Our storehouses are to be blessed. Everything's our hands touch should be blessed. We should see ourselves prospering wherever it is that God has placed us. There should be no barriers to progress. There should be no barriers to promotion. I wish somebody could put that in this year. There will be no barriers to promotion in my life. And here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, says, Now the Lord hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. He's about to make progress. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I will bless thee. I will bless thee. This is the same covenant promise that you and I have bequeathed through Abraham in Jesus Christ. God says, I will bless thee. Bless you going out. Bless you coming in. Amen. I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. This is the blessing of Abraham. Thou shalt be a blessing. There, there's things in your heart that you want to do for people. But sometimes we find ourselves in a season of lack when we, we've been called a blessing. And I am declaring in Jesus' name that we're going to walk in the full manifestation of that. Amen. I will bless them that bless thee. This is the blessing of Abraham. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed not cursed, not kept down, not held back, not recalling, not slipping back, not taking 20 steps forward, 10 steps back, 10 steps forward, 20 steps back, but in thee shall all of the families of the earth be blessed. The blessing of Abraham is the declaration as the blessed. That's, that's what the blessing of Abraham is. It's, the de it's God's declaration to Abraham that you are the blessed. We are the blessed. Therefore, you and I cannot be cursed. That means that every demonic chain, caging system, gate, bars, barriers in Jesus' name must move. Our families are blessed through faith for Abraham. We are the offspring of Christ. Therefore, the blessing of Abraham has come upon us. And it doesn't stop at that. What does it mean to receive the promise of the Spirit? The promise of the Spirit, it, it is declared to us in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. And because ye are sons, God have sent forth the Spirit of his Son in, in your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The blessed promise that we have sonship through Jesus Christ, sonship through Jesus Christ. We are not a servant in bondage to anything. And when barriers are placed before us, it is a type of bondage keeping us down, keeping us out of what God has promised us. We are sons in relationship with our heavenly father with every right to break through every illegal barrier in our lives. Why are they illegal? Because it is established in the word of God what Christ has set us free from and what he has redeemed us from. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, Amplified Classic, it says, for the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship. The, the mere fact that the scripture speaks of sonship, it speaks of a freedom found by a in a divine relationship with our heavenly father. In the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father. So we are no longer under a yoke in bondage to anything. We are free. There should be no barriers in our progress. 
the son has made us free. So, so how do we break through these barriers? Things that, 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 that seemingly we sense that are preventing us from moving forward, making progress in some particular area. I have freedom here, but there's, it just seems like I just can't break through in this area. We have to remember that Christ has totally set us free. In John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, then shall ye, ye shall be free indeed. Once again, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. We declare on the authority of God's written word that every barrier to progress in our lives are destroyed by the blood of Jesus. That is one of the most powerful weapons to breaking through spiritual barriers, things that are, that are preventing us, the blood of Jesus, and declaring our freedom. The will of the Lord, watch this now, this is important. The word of the Lord is an impenetrable barrier against the enemy. The, 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 the best place for you and I to find the greatest level of freedom from spiritual barriers is being in the will of the Lord. When we are in the will of the Lord, there is no barrier that Satan can place before us that can stand. When you and I are in the will of the Lord, there is no spiritual barriers that the enemy can, uh, can be established in our lives. When we're breaking any barrier to progress in life is first knowing that you have been blessed by the Lord. The enemy seeks to establish spiritual barriers to our progress when we are ignorant of our covenant rights. Now, I want you to see something here. See how much time we got? Amen. I want you to go to, to uh, go to Numbers, Numbers chapter 22. I want to show you something here. We all know this story. Numbers chapter 22. Now, I said there are two sources of spiritual barriers. One satanic in nature, and the other is God. We have to discern when it's God. It's for our protection. It's a divine no, and it may be a divine redirect. God is saying, no, not now. That may be your desire. That may be what you want but I have something greater. It's good that you thought that way, but, but here's where I want to direct you. So I'm going to put a barrier in your path. But then there's also God putting up a barrier to warn. Here in Numbers chapter 22, verse 18 to 31. We know this, this is the story of Balak, Balaam, the donkey and the, and the angel. <laughs> of course, ba uh, uh, Balak is the king of Moab. Uh, he saw what God did in bringing uh, uh, Israel out of Egypt and how uh, God dramatically delivered them and how God routed, routed all of the kings on their way uh, to the promised land. And here Balak, he sees, and he's concerned, you know, he sees this big troop of people coming by the millions. Oh, my God, they're, they're just going to eat up all the resources and and, and, and this is just too much for me to handle, you know, so he knows that Balaam is a prophet and Balaam uh, 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 discerns the will, the mind of the Lord. And, and God speaks to Balaam and God shows Balaam things and God has used Balaam. So Balak said, let me get that prophet over there in Israel. Let me hire him for my wicked purposes to stop this troop, this mighty army, this force, uh, 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 for, uh, 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 force of nature that God is releasing into this territory. He's afraid. So in verse 18, it says, verse 18, 
And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me this house full of silver and go, I cannot go beyond the word of, of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. So God's word is a, is a barrier. God's word creates boundary. So Balaam knows he can't go beyond that. He says, now therefore I pray you, tarry ye also here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. So Balak has already got Balaam committed. And then verse 20, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise and go and go with them. But yet the word which I, he said, but yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall thou do. Now watch this. I want you to, I want you to just think about God sometimes. He, he, sometimes, I mean, when I read the scripture and I, I think about what God does, I said, Lord, you, you, you something else. You tell the man to go, but then you rebuke the man. You're angry for, for the man go. Because I believe what God is doing is looking at Balaam's intention. God says, okay, you can go, but Balaam, you know what? If you really are upright and righteous, you won't even do this. But I'm telling you, you can do this, Balaam, if you want to. But Balaam chooses to do it. Look at verse 20. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God was angered. And God's anger was kindled because he went. But then you just say, watch this now. In verse, verse number uh, uh, 21, and Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. But in verse 20 says, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. So God told him to do it. But I believe, again, this is an issue. This is about the issues of the motivations of the heart of this prophet. And verse 23 says, and, and, and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass and turned her into the way but the angel of the lord stood in a path of the vineyards a wall being on this side and a wall on that side so now we see here a spiritual barrier why because now you see natural walls but you see the real barrier is the angel and the source is god so god can be the source of a barrier and that source of a barrier can be for protection or a divine stop, a divine no. And we see that in this particular instance with Balaam. Now, and when they asked, saw the angel, the uh, angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her against. In other words, I'm going to cause some pain. And you, Balaam, just let you know that there, there's something in front of us that you can't see. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, so, they, so the donkey could see the angel, but Balaam could not. And she fell down under the Balaam, and Balaam's anger was king of Kendall and smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me. I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I th thine ass? upon which thou hast written ever since I was thine own unto this day? Was I ever wrought or angry to do so unto thee? And he said, nay. Verse 31, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand and, and, he, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. So now 
Balaam needed to discern, he needed discernment to understand that this was the Lord becoming a barrier to his forward progress. And there are times when God himself will become a barrier to our progress. Why? Because there's something that God wants to stop us from doing. And we must discern that. We must discern that. And that's healthy and that's good for us. But God can be the source. This is called a God source barrier. He's the source of the barrier. And so in Genesis chapter three, we know this. In Genesis chapter three, after the fall of Adam and Eve, in Genesis 3, 23, 24, NLT, so the Lord had banished them from the Garden of Eden and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden. And he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forward to guard the way to the tree of life. So this is God now putting up a divine barrier to prevent access. And there are times when God does not want us to have access to something. So God will put up a barrier. We must discern that this is God. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll be binding the devil and, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, we'll be blaming ourselves and what did I do wrong? And, and no, this is the devil. And, and no, this ain't the devil. This is God. So we have to discern when it is God. And when, and when God, when we begin to see God and he begins to put a peace in our heart and we enter into his rest, we know that this is God protecting us. This is God saying no. And we're able to wait on God. And when we're able to wait on God, we're still going to make progress because God has a better way. Now, if Satan is allowed to put up a barrier to our progress, we must discern what the will of God is for that season. Now, if he's allowed, remember, God is ultimately sovereign over everything, even Satan even his movement. But why is it that God will allow Satan to put up a barrier? So we must discern the will of God for that season, but be prepared to change course. Be prepared to change course. Why? Because God always wants us to make forward progress. Now we've been studying in, in, in the book of Thessalonians, and I want to show you this in plain sight, what that looks like. If Satan is allowed to put up a barrier to our progress, we must discern what the will of God is for that season, but be prepared to change course. All right. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse 17 to 18. NLT. Paul says this to the church there at Thessalonica. He said, this brothers and sisters, after we were separ separated from you for a little while, though our hearts never left you, we tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. But notice what Paul's words are. But we wanted very much to come to you. And I, Paul tried again and again, but Satan prevented us. There was a spiritual barrier. This was a God allowed spiritual barrier. But the, but, but the source was Satan. Now, the King James says, Satan hindered us. And there are seasons in your life where you know, wait a minute, this is the devil. Th 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 this, is, this is the devil. This is the devil. But then what we must do is begin to seek the Lord as to what God will have us do as a redirect. That, 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 that it, it can't be that we're going to stay right here in this place. There is another way to move forward. In other words, we're not going to become discouraged, despondent. We're not going to allow the devil to bring us into a season where, you know, we just give up. You know, we just grow weary and we just Amen. say, no, there's not another way. No, there has to be another way. So we need to know. What we need to know is that a barrier in the present should not leave us without any options. It should make us more reliant upon the Lord for the next step. What, what, it, what do I do, God? What, what, what is the way around this? 
What is the way through this? In other words, what is the strategy to move forward regardless? You know, I'm looking at this new year, I'm looking at 2022, and I've looked at all the issues that have been happening with 920 Prospect Avenue. We have been uh, 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 diligent over the last five years. We persevered through a whole lot of the same old, same old stuff. But I'm praying, God, what is the new strategy? Why? Because there's a barrier to progress taking place here. The enemy is trying to hinder the advance of the gospel. But how many of you know that the devil is a liar? And so it should make us more reliant on the Lord for the next step. And that's exactly what we're praying in this season. In other words, what is the strategy to move forward regardless? So in this case, God's will was not hindered from going forward. It just required a different strategy. And so these barriers, particularly spiritual barriers that are there to hinder our forward progress, always have a divine detour from God. And so we understand, you know, the devil. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, at least Satan should get an advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices. He wants to stop us from moving forward. He wants to stop you and I from moving forward. But God has a way of helping us, as David said, to, to break through a troop and to leap over a wall. But one way or the other, we're going to break through in Ephesians chapter uh, 6, 12, we know this, for we're not wrestling, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. It, it would be one thing if this would be things that we could see. We could just, we could just put our finger on I, I, I know what this is. I know the shape of it. I know how high it is. I know how deep it is. I know how wide it is. I can, I can, I can put together a strategy. No. When we are dealing with spiritual barriers, we need king discernment. We need a word from the Lord. Lord, what is it that I need to do to break through this thing or to go around this thing? There is another way. So we're dealing with unseen, the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in high places or heavenly places. Now, let me make this point here. And I'm going to wrap this up right here. Misconceptions about the will of God in a particular direction will establish a God barrier. Now, God himself is going to place this barrier. Why? It's, it's almost like there are times when we feel so confident that we know what the will of the Lord is. God has been using us. The Spirit's been leading us. And we can get so familiar with the movement of God and not leave ourselves open for the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue to go down a certain road only to find that there's a divine roadblock there. And God's saying no. So misconceptions about the will of God in a particular direction will establish a God barrier. But this is good because it is the Lord that orders our steps. It should never be our zeal or desire. This is why we must prayerfully discern the will of God in a particular direction. When we do, a barrier can quickly turn into a detour. I'm gonna say that last part. This is why we must prayerfully discern the will of God in a particular direction. When we do, a barrier can quickly turn into a detour. And I believe throughout this year that as God is going to supernaturally, by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, show us some of those barriers that are spiritual in nature that's been preventing our forward progress, some of which we're going to break through like a troop, some of which we're going to leap over because it's, it, it, it's not a wall too high that God cannot supernaturally show us how to get over it. There's going to be some things that God is going to show us a divine detour so that we can keep making progress because Satan is a liar. 
in Acts, let me show you this picture right here. In Acts chapter 16, this is coming out of our, our study on Tuesday nights, Acts chapter 16. I want you to see this barrier and detour. It's a spiritual barrier established by God. But now here's God bringing a detour. Here in Acts chapter 16, this is the Apostle Paul. He wants to go to Asia. God's been using him. He wants to bring the, the gospel. He wants to see it advanced there. He wants to see souls won there. He has a zeal to go into Asia Minor. But the Holy Spirit puts up a barrier. And here in verse 6 through 10, it says, Now when they had gone through uh, Phygeria and the region of, Gal uh, of Galatea, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel in Asia. This is a divine barrier. This is God putting up a barrier. After they were come to Mysia, they are saved to go to Bethania, but the Spirit suffered them not. We must discern. This is for our protection, saints of God. There are barriers that are God-ordained for our protection. These are barriers that are good for us. I want you to put that in the chat. There are God-ordained barriers that are good for us. We must discern these. These are not to be broken through like a troop. These are not to leap over a wall. These are for divine protection. And we must discern them. And they, by passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. Here's the, here's the divine detour. Here's the, here's the divine uh, uh, redirect. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over here into Macedonia. Now watch this now. There was a barrier, a divine no, a divine redirect from God that in the natural if Paul was not spiritual it would have stopped the advance of the gospel but God now puts that barrier there he creates a divine detour to redirect Paul so that he would make progress in a place that he had ordained Paul wanted to go to Asia but now God is saying to Paul no I want you to go to Macedonia the wall is there to stop you from going to Asia. It is for your protection. But I am giving you a divine detour to make progress in Macedonia. Be, be willing. Be willing to discern where a barrier is God saying, no in this season, but now God is about to give you a divine detour to make progress somewhere else. I don't know who that's for. It says, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision immediately, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. So there was a barrier preventing them from going to Asia. Here God gives them a divine detour into Macedonia. The gospel is still being preached. The advance of the kingdom is still taking place. Progress. It's still happening. So, so Satan can use people, circumstances, and demonic agents to create impenetrable barriers to our progress. This could be things that will hinder your spiritual growth, your personal growth, the advancement of the gospel, the advancement on a job, the advancement of your career, vocation, advancement in education, advancement in relationships, advancement in marital status, from singlehood to marital status, and even to childbirth. That there can be there can be demonic barriers to to pregnancy. All of these different things can be dealt with spiritually by the authority of God's word. Now, I'm going to stop right there and, and, and encourage you that by the help of the Holy Spirit, by the authority of God's word, by the authority of the covenant of God for which you and I now have a right to every promise and every provision, 
and by the rights of our redemption, that if there be anything, anything spiritual in nature that is not God word, that, that is not God ordained, that's not, not a barrier put there uh, for our protection or, or God trying to redirect us into uh, his perfect will. Because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. That is true in every sense of the word. God leads us by his spirit. A man may plan his way, but God directs his steps. And there are sometimes our motivations may be right, but it's not the will of God. It's not sin, but God is saying, I love your motivation. I love your zeal. I love your, your, your desire, your determination, but I have to get you over here. So I put a roadblock just to stop you, but I'm going to redirect you as you discern that I said no here, but I'm, I'm, I'm directing you here. So that's God. That, that's good. But, but that thing that, that is there, that is demonic in, in nature, that robs our peace, our joy, uh, uh, our fulfillment, that, 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 that sense of why am I still here in this place? I've, I've camped around this mountain too long. I'm ready to move forward. This is where we pray, God, give us discernment. Come on, come on, I, I want you to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking you for discernment. Every demonic barrier, spiritual in nature, destructive in nature, that is trying to hinder our destiny, our forward progress, glory to God, our advancement in spiritual matters, our advancement in relations, our advances, advancements in our vocation, education, our, our jobs, our whatever it is, God, we're not going to camp around this, this mountain and plateau right here. You have greater. Whatever has to be removed. Next week, we're going to deal with mental back. Whether it's in the mental realm, whatever, maybe my, my vision, our vision, our vision is too small. And you have greater, Father. And, and we've not ascertained that. And as, and as a result of just thinking on the level that we are, we are putting up a barrier that keeps us where we are. God, show it to us. Let it be discovered. And in the realm of the spirit, we speak to every demonic barrier, gate of brass, bars of iron, chains of imprisonment. We break your power by the authority of the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb of God. We declare our immunity. We declare our uh, redemption. We declare our deliverance. We decree our freedom, our emancipation to move forward. God will not take 20 steps forward, 10 steps backwards, 10 steps forward, 20 steps backward. We'll not find ourselves wallowing in disappointment because we see there's greater on the inside of us, God, that you're trying to draw us into the greater beyond that place of limitation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree in Jesus' name over the people of God that this is our season, this is our year of forward progress, forward momentum, forward advancement in all things pertaining to your kingdom and all things pertaining to our lives and family and all things pertaining to our marriages, our relationships, singlehood, whatever it is, God, we decree in Jesus' name that every barrier to progress must be removed in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let every enemy to progress be dethroned in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, if there's barriers to health and wellness, whatever they are, let wisdom come. Let wisdom come. We break through those barriers of weakness and infirmity and sickness and disease, part healthy, Part sick. God, we decree in Jesus' name that we are whole 
in our bodies, in our spirits, in our souls, and everything about us is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We pray right now for...